This story is brought to your ears by all our fantastic supporters on Patreon. To get in on the action yourself with bloopers, extras, and the occasional early story, join us at patreon.com slash voiceofallmtg. We'd like to thank our newest patrons, Joseph Watson, Alex Ortiz, Julian Gonzalez, DM, and Carmen Soto for already donating. For more stories or just a chat, visit voiceofallmtg.com. And now, Voice of All presents The Path to Opulent, Episode 2 of War of the Spark. Hikara was dead. That's all I knew. It was lucky, I guess, that I was standing between Teo and Mr. Skaya, who were fending off the attacking Eternals. I don't think I could have fended off a house cat right then. I don't think I would have bothered. My memories of the next few minutes aren't terribly clear. I think Master Zarek said something about his beacon summoning more of those planeswalker types like him and Mistress Kaya and Mr. Jura and Mr. Bellerin and Teo. I guess there were planeswalkers appearing all around us. I think one was a minotaur. I don't know. Hikara was dead. She should have been a planeswalker. A planes dancer. I could picture that. Hikara somersaulting across the multiverse, visiting different worlds, making them all smile. Drawing a little blood. Or, you know, a lot of blood. Plus, if she were a planeswalker, she could have planeswalked out of the way of whatever killed her. How'd she die? But only Teo was paying any attention to me. And he didn't know. And then something happened. I really hadn't been paying attention to anyone, but I think someone must have cast a spell. Teo dropped his shield and covered his eyes. That snapped me out of it. Had to. An Eternal was about to brain my new friend Teo. My only friend Teo, with a hammer. Furious, I leapt at it and stabbed it in the eyes. It tottered, then fell. I was seething. I don't ever remember being this angry. I was prime girl material now. My parents would be so proud. Not every planeswalker is gatewatch material, you know. And some are downright nasty. You have to assume that, nasty or not, most planeswalkers won't be big fans of Nicol Bolas. We need to split up. Spread out through the city. Save as many people as we can and rally every planeswalker we find. A bunch of them shouted. Aye! Kaya turned to Teo and me. You two are damn useful. Come with me. Teo, bless him, was a natural follower. And I wasn't going to leave him alone to die like I had Hikara, so when he followed Mistress Kaya's order to follow her, I followed him. I guess it was a good thing. The streets were dangerous enough that it almost took my mind off Hikara for a little while. Almost. Mistress Kaya was trying to get to Orjova to summon her guild into battle, but we were a long way from the Cathedral Opulent, and phalanxes and crops of the Dreadhorde were scouring the streets of Ravnica, killing everyone they found. The saving grace was that... For whatever reason, the Eternals weren't entering any of the buildings. If folks stayed inside, they'd be safe. For now, at least. So we crossed Ravnica, through streets, byways, and alleys, and we did a fair decent job of saving people as we went. And because we could tell them to find shelter and stay indoors, we didn't have to worry too much about them afterward. And we never had to chase any Eternals inside ourselves. Which was good, because fighting in the open was leastways a bit safer than taking on these creatures in close quarters. I mean, there were only three of us, and Teo's thing with those light shields was pretty much only defensive. Don't get me wrong, we needed him. He had our backs, our fronts, our sides, but I don't think he actually killed a single Eternal. You've never killed anyone or anything in your life, have you? Uh, I killed a spider once. A giant spider? How giant is giant. Was it bigger than your thumb? Uh, no. Then just a regular spider. Right. Just a regular spider. I think he thought I was disappointed in him then. But I think a part of me was glad he was so... What's the word? Pure. Yeah. So pure. He was already insecure, and I didn't want to add to that. So I decided then and there to kind of put her car in my pocket for the time being. We had Eternals to deal with, and he needed me now. I'd mourn later. I'd mourn forever. I'm glad you're not a killer. Ha, <laughs> thanks? It's never really come up before now. 
Anyway, we tried to avoid the larger contingents, but we did great against individual Eternals, or small crops of them. Mistress Kaya did the heavy lifting, so to speak. The creatures seemed particularly vulnerable to her ghost daggers. And they couldn't touch her when she was incorporeal. But they could still see her. And that made her and Teo, with his big, glowing white shields, good distractions for me. Cause really, none of the Eternals paid me much mind unless I was already killing him. I'd duck out from behind one of Teo's diamond-shaped shields, dodge two or three Eternals, and then stab one that hadn't seen me coming, usually plunging both daggers into its eyes and deep into its brain. Then I'd be gone before it hit the ground. Between a couple of these skirmishes, as we crossed a wide but empty street, empty of everything except a handful of corpses that proved Eternals had already been this way, Teo turned to Kaya. So are we Gatewatch now? I don't know. Never heard of Gatewatch before today. Not entirely clear what it is. The good guys, I think. Ravnica's equivalent to the Shield Mage Order. I don't think they're limited to Ravnica. All the members are planeswalkers. Perhaps they're the multiverse's equivalent of your order. So, the good guys. Yes. Then I think both of you are Gatewatch. Not me, of course. <laughs> I'm not a walker. I'm not Gatewatch. I'm Gateless. That's the rat. Always Gateless. Well, you've killed more Eternals than I have. I tried not to roll my eyes since he hadn't killed any. That's such a sweet thing to say, Teo. You're such a sweet boy. Isn't he a sweet boy, Mistress Kaya? Very sweet. I'm pretty sure I'm older than you. That's why I adopted him first thing. I... How's that cut? I can't see a scar. Thrown a bit, he rubbed his head where the cut used to be. Oh, no, it's, it's fine, I guess. I can't feel it at all. It was nice of Mr. Goldman to heal it for you. It's not like he wasn't busy with other things, what with all the Eternals he was killing left and right. Wasn't it nice of Mr. Goldmain, Mistress Kaya? Very nice. By now, we could see the spiky spires of the Cathedral Opulent looming above closer, shorter buildings. Suddenly, Mistress Kaya took off down an alley running diagonally between two buildings. It seemed a strange choice, but I figured she knew what she was doing, so I grabbed Teo's hand and we followed. About a hundred yards in, I realized she was just looking up towards the cathedral, taking the most direct route. I don't think we want to go this way. We do if it'll get us to Arjova faster. It's a dead end. She stopped short and turned to face me. You might have mentioned that sooner. You looked so confident. I thought maybe you knew about a secret passage. I mean, there are a lot of secret passages through Ravnica. A lot. And I pretty much know all of them. Or most of them, anyway. <laughs> but I figured the Guildmaster Kaya might know one or two I don't, right? Rat, I've been Guildmaster for a matter of weeks. I've only been on Ravnica for a matter of months. I barely know this city any better than Teo here. <laughs> I only arrived this morning. I know that. Right, right. So from now on, the native navigates. This way. Still holding Teo's hand. I'm not sure why, I think I just liked holding it. I pulled him back the way we came. He let himself be dragged behind me. Mistress Kaya followed us. I heard them coming before I saw them. Okay, maybe back the other way. Why? A split second later, she knew. Another crop of Eternals had entered the mouth of the alley. Too many for us to fight in this enclosed space. The minute they spotted us, they charged. We turned and ran. You said this was a dead end! It is! Then where are we running to? There's a door to a speakeasy at the end of the alley. It won't get us to the cathedral, but if we get inside, maybe the creepies will forget about us. It's as good a solution as any. The Eternals were fast, but they weren't running for their lives. We beat them pretty handily to the end of the alley and the heavy iron door to Crumnens. Finally letting go of Teo, I tried the handle. It was locked. Of course. Why would it be open in daylight? I banged on the door with both fists. No answer. It's okay. <laughs> I can pick the lock. So can I, but I don't think there's time. Oh, by the time! Don't worry! I glanced over my shoulder and saw him chant up a largish diamond shield of white light, separating us from the Eternals just a second or two before they smashed right into <sighs> it. He grunted painfully and managed to maintain the shield, even expanded into a rectangle that spanned the width of the alleyway so that none of the creatures could slip around it. I didn't know you could do that. <sighs> Neither did I! Never done it before! Ugh. But I can use the alley walls to substitute the geometry. It's like leaning in. If you say so. 
I could hear the weapons of the Eternal slamming against his shield, hear him chanting under his breath, and hear him grunt a little in response to every blow. I didn't know how long he'd be able to keep this up. Something clicked softly. Got it. I stood. I grabbed the door handle, but it still wouldn't budge. It's unlocked. Must be bolted from the inside. Leave it to me. She ghosted through the door. She wasn't gone long before her head ghosted back through. I'll get it open, but you need to hold out a bit longer. I looked back at Teo. He said nothing. But his eyes squinted shut and he nodded once. He was no longer chanting, just gritting his teeth and leaning toward his shield with both hands Damn. as a Lazatep Minotaur headbutted it over and over while the rest of the Eternals smashed maces against it or the butts of their sickle-shaped swords. White light flashed at every impact. The shield wasn't going to hold. Mistress Kaya must have had the same thought. She ghosted her body back into the alley and drew her daggers, ready to fight. Fortunately, help came. Once again, I heard the newcomers before I saw them. Heard them whooping and hooting. I smiled and put a hand on Teo's shoulder. Just a few more seconds. It'll be alright. Gruel warriors. Gan Shakta, Donri Raid, Akamal Kray, Govan Radley, Shiza and Jadira, Bombop and others attacked the Eternals from behind, axes chopping through Lazatep. Tusks piercing, hammers raining down. Ganshakta smashed two Eternals' heads together with enough force to shatter their skulls into Lazatep and bone fragments. The Eternals instantly forgot about us and turned to face the Gruul. Teo slumped, dropping his shield. I stood over him protectively with my daggers out, while Mistress Kaya began attacking the creepies from behind. Domri cut off an Eternal's head with his long, weighted scythe. You must be killed, Master Kaya, the almighty ghost assassin. Lucky for you, Domri Raid was here, enjoying the bloody chaos! Your raid? I had to suppress a giggle, as Domri looked instantly insulted. Call some raid! Who else? Domri had always been a dumb little twit. I still couldn't believe he had replaced a fine warrior like Borborygmos as Grill's new guildmaster. And I really couldn't believe Gan Shakta was following him. On the other hand, I was glad Domri had led everyone here when he had. I'm grateful. Damn right you are. By this time, most of the Eternals were in pieces on the ground. Domri snorted and shouted to his warriors. Okay, mates, fun's over here. Let's find us some more. The girl started to follow him back up the alley, Gan Shakta taking up the rear. Unfortunately, one of the Eternals wasn't quite dead enough. It was missing an arm, but that didn't seem to trouble it much, and it leapt to its feet with a sword in its remaining hand, prepared to stab Gon Shakta in the back. Teo reacted even before I did, reaching out a hand and launching a small but solid sphere of white light at the back of the creature's head. It impacted hard, and the Eternal stumbled briefly, making just enough noise to alert Gon Shakta to the danger. He turned in time to see Teo hit the creepy with another sphere. Then Mistress Kea was on the thing, stabbing up into its guts with both her knives. The Eternal was dying, but didn't seem to know it yet. It was still swinging its sword at Gan Shakta. So I jumped on the creepy's shoulders and stabbed my daggers down into its eyes and deep into its skull. It collapsed under me. Gan Shakta frowned. I knew he hated being saved by outsiders. With some reluctance, he grunted thanks to both Mistress Kaya and Teo. Ignoring me, he turned and trotted to catch up to Domri and the rest. Who was that? The big guy? That's Gan Shakta. My father. So now we were traveling in packs, I guess. Me and Teo Varada and Mistress Kaya were now in the company of Gan Shakta, the ogres Govan and Bombop, Akamal, Shiza and Jadira, the Viashino twins, and a handful of other girl warriors, shamans, and druids, all led by Master Domri Raid. We soon ran into a phalanx of Eternals, and midway through the fight, the enemy got all sandwiched between Simic on the left and Izzet on the right. Who are they? I nodded left. Those are Simic Combine forces. Terraformers, super soldiers, and merfolk led by Biomancer Voril. Then I nodded right. And those are Izzet League mech mages. That's Master Zarek's guild, led by his second-in-command, Chamberlain Marie. Wait, which one's the Marie? The Goblin. Okay. I'm gonna test you on all these names later. He shot me a panicked look before he realized I was teasing him. Then he glared comically. I think he likes it when I tease him, you know? 
We made short work of that phalanx, and now we were three guilds strong. But the pack just kept growing. Another battle brought more help. Planeswalkers this time, a merfolk woman named Kiora from a world called Zendikar, and a young human woman named Samet from some place called Amonket, which apparently was where all these Eternals originally came from. You couldn't just keep him there? She ignored the comment and me. I guess she was a little too busy fighting and mourning. Mourning and fighting. She knew the names of every single Eternal she killed. Knew them, I guess, from when they were her friends. Watching her grief, it was hard not to think of Picara. She'd kill one in grimly state. You are free, Eknet. Then she'd kill two more. You are free, Tenet. You are free, Nyet. I wondered if Ikara showed up as a mindless, murderous Eternal, whether I'd be able to kill her. Or would it just be easier to let her kill me? When the battle ended, we continued on our way, surrounded by this teeming throng of allies. Mistress Kaya was still trying to get us to Orjova. Teo was staring at Kiora while trying desperately not to make it too obvious. <laughs> what? You've never seen Merfolk before? We don't have much water on Gobokan. I laughed and pointed to one of the Izzet mech mages. You've never seen a Veldalkin? I know people with black skin, brown skin, tawny skin, and tan skin, but I've never seen anyone with blue skin before. Laughing some more, I nodded in Jadira's direction. <laughs> You've never seen a Vyashino? Hmm, maybe some of our lizards grow up to be Vyashino. Ever see a rat before? I've seen many rats on Gobokan, but <laughs> none like you. <laughs> I laughed again and punched him, Ow. real gentle-like, on the arm. I stole a glance at Gan Shakta, who was marching just behind Domri and none too happy about it. My father was used to following Borborygmos, someone he could respect as a leader and a warrior. It clearly galled him to ask as Master Raid's lieutenant, and he stared daggers at Domri's back. I wanted to reassure him that dumb Domri was an ass, who'd lose control of the girl soon enough, but I couldn't figure out a way to navigate that discussion right then, so I just sighed and continued walking between Teo and Mistress Kaya. Besides, we were in another fight soon enough. We'd come up on a cobblestone-covered hill, where the Dreadhorde had the high ground. Mr. Voril shouted a command. Take them out! Take them all out! Chamberlain Marie looked ready to tell Mr. Voril what he could do with his orders, but Dum Domri beat her to the punch with some choice grill cursing, which was all kind of pointless, because the next thing he did was run uphill. Come on, mates! We don't need these lab rats teaching us how to knock heads! I could read Chamberlain Marie easy enough. She decided she'd rather be Mr. Voril's ally than follow Dum Domri's example. So it wasn't the most coordinated of attacks, but Grohl, Simic, and Izzet still stormed the hill together, which was some limited pan-guild progress, I guess. Of course, we went with him. Me and Teo and Mistress Kaya and Miss Kiora. I looked around for Miss Samet, but she was already ahead of the pack. You are free, Hawk. You are free, Kawit. Just as Teo and I reached the summit, two more women materialized within arm's reach of us. Both planeswalkers had warm brown skin, but otherwise Miss Watley and Miss Sahili Rai, I learn their names later, couldn't have looked less alike. Miss Watley was armored and armed, with a long, tightly braided black ponytail emerging from beneath her helm. She was short, almost as short as me, but powerfully muscled with searching eyes and a grim mouth. Miss Rai wore a long, swirling dress, decorated with shiny gold filigree. She was taller than even Mistress Kaya and wore her hair in swirls atop her head, which made her seem taller still. She was lithe and graceful, with curious eyes and a smiling mouth. Different as they were, they were clearly friends. Attempting to size up the situation, they exchanged a quick glance but stood there doing nothing, a little unsure which side they should be on. Teo more or less answered the unspoken question by throwing up a shield to block an eternal axe that might otherwise have split Miss Rai's skull. Thank you. Yes, my thanks. I had seen enough, so I scurried past them both to get to the fighting. I killed one Eternal just as yet a third Planeswalker appeared. This one seemed to be somehow informed of the situation and immediately joined the battle using her magic to take control of one of the creepies and setting it against all the others. She had long, honey-blonde hair, a blue-white hooded cloak, and a long crook staff. She told Miss Kiora that her name was Miss Kazmina, or Miss Kazmiri, or Mistress Kazmagorica, or something. Okay, it wasn't Mistress Kazmagorica. But yes, even I was having trouble remembering everyone's name by this time. I lost track of her soon after, but she did some decent damage with her enthralled Eternal right then and there. 
So did Miss Watley, who took to the killing of creepies quite well. And that shiny little golden hummingbird that Miss Sahili released sped right through the forehead of one Eternal and emerged out the back of its skull. The Eternal staggered and dropped. I wanted to catch and keep that useful shiny, but the bird never slowed. It repeated its attack on another Eternal, and another. It wasn't all good news. Poor Bombop rushed in too far ahead of the rest of us. He crushed five or six Lazatep skulls with his stone hammer, but the Eternals soon swarmed over him, dragging him down to stab him about thirty times before any of us could catch up to help. There was also a Simic Shaman, I never did get her name, who took a moment too long to cast her spell and wound up beheaded. The fallen head managed to croak out the last few necessary syllables before expiring, and the creepy that killed her exploded in a shower of Lazatep and goop. So, yeah. Setbacks, you know? But the battle was over soon enough. We'd won, and not a single Eternal remained alive, or even undead. Our pack paused to catch our collective breaths, and then those breaths were stolen away at the sound of a remote but ear-splitting crack. We all turned, and from the top of that hard one hill, we could see four immense Eternals emerging from the tear in the world to tower over the distant 10th District Plaza. Whoa. Big. Son of a- What are they? They are our gods. But Bolas killed them, or had them killed. Now, they are his. His god Eternals. Well, sure. Of course. That's what the day was missing. God Eternals. We watched in silence for a bit as the four god creepies tore apart what appeared to be Vidugazi which was strange and horrific for all sorts of reasons, not the least of which was that I couldn't figure out how the World Tree had gotten to the plaza from its home in Selesnian territory in the first place. I felt like crying again. And then I felt like hitting dumb Domri when he actually cheered. Woo! <laughs> you see that? That was V2 Gazi they trashed! Crook, they taught those Selesnian troops a lesson. A couple of his party boys nodded or grunted their agreement. But the rest of us just stared at him, stunned. Gruul? We're fighting on the wrong side. This dragon's shaking things up. He'll tear the guilds down. He'll tear Ravnica down. Isn't that what we've always wanted? When the guilds fall, chaos reigns. And when chaos reigns, the Gruul will rule. You hear? We're joining the dragon. I fought the urge to stab dumb Domri in the eyes by looking to see what my father would do. Ganshakta did not disappoint. Raid, you'd serve that master? Partner, mate, not serve. You don't know the difference, boy. You're no clan leader. You're a follower. I'm going back to Borborikmos. Dum Domri looked stunned. Ganshakta scowled down at him, then turned and walked away. I watched him go, full of girl pride. Well, it's been a girl kind of day for me. Teo looked at me. It occurred to me that he thought Ganshakta should have paid more attention to his daughter. I shrugged. Teo's a good boy, but he didn't understand my family situation at all. Which is totally understandable, because it's kind of odd, and I hadn't actually told him anything about it. I wasn't used to telling people about it, frankly, and I wasn't quite sure how I'd even go about it. But I figured he'd catch on eventually. Forget Ganshakta! He's an old troop too! This is our moment, you see? You're a fool, Raid. Bolas doesn't keep faith with those he chooses to bargain with. Do you truly believe you can win his favor unbidden? But Dum Domri ignored her, leading his warriors downhill toward the plaza. Hubs on the way, dragon! We'll knock them all down together! Kaya looked angry enough to follow and drag him back, and I was angry enough to cut out his fool tongue. But another crop of Eternals was coming up the other side of the hill. So, with a collective sigh, we all prepared for another fight. I couldn't hear the words. They were meant for planeswalkers, not for someone that was anyone like me. But I felt Mr. Bellerin's mind touch like a stone skipping across the liquid surface of my psyche. But for Mistress Kaya, it was clearly more intense. Distracted, even a little pained, by whatever Mr. Bellerin had projected. She was nearly split in two by the axe of yet another Eternal Minotaur before I pulled her out of the way. Did you hear that? Hear what? I jumped on the Minotaur's back and... 
Unable to reach around its horns to stab it through the eye sockets, I plunged my two little daggers into its neck. We were still amid the pack. The girl were gone. Some had followed dumb Domri. Some had followed my father. But the Simic and Izzet fighters were still with us, as were Miss Samet, Miss Kiora, Miss Rai, and Miss Watley. My attack on the bullheaded Eternal did little damage, but it got the groupie's attention off Mistress Kaya, which was my main goal anyway. I jumped off and scurried away behind one of Teo's shields. The confused Minotaur looked around for, <laughs> well, me. It gave Mistress Kaya time to recover and use her own spectral daggers to send that Eternal to its eternal rest. Suddenly, another planeswalker, a huge Vyashino with lime green skin, materialized right in front of us. He had just enough time to hiss, What is this? before a female Eternal grabbed him from behind. The Eternal used no weapon on the Lizard Man, but what followed was pure horror show. The Creepy seemed to draw the Yashino's life force right out of his back, like an Izzet fan sucking up a flame. She absorbed that fire until it glowed from within her Lazatep body, glowed brightly enough to create, or at least highlight, cracks in her Lazatep shell. The Vyashino fell, a lifeless husk, as the Eternal burst into flames from the inside out. Then that fire rocketed into the air, shooting like a comet toward 10th District Plaza and the Dragon. The burned-out Eternal collapsed atop the dead lizard, as if they'd been lovers, dying together in a final embrace. We were lucky Miss Watley was already killing the last creepy of this particular crop, because everyone else just stood there in total shock. Just then, I felt Mr. Bellerin's mind touch again. I looked towards a grimacing Teo. It was Bellerin of the Gatewatch. He said, Retreat. We need a plan. Contact every planeswalker and guildmaster you can find. Meet us at the Azorius Senate. Now! I guess we have new orders. Thank you for listening to this production of Voice of All. As listener-supported entertainment, we rely on you not just for the voices of the characters, but also to keep us going and growing. If you enjoyed what you heard, please support us by rating and reviewing us on iTunes, or following us on Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and Google Podcasts, or just plain sharing with your friends. You can also support us financially on Patreon for exclusive perks. The Path to Opulent was written by Greg Weissman. The podcast was produced and edited by Gin Keshi, with sound editing by Liz Jones. This week's story featured the voice talents of Madison Dabs, Inra Zyro, David Ford, Voodoo Sudu, Ragna, Sean Thomas, Christina Edelman, Malachi Gospodarski, Ash Thurman, Caitlin Buckley, and Adam Stevens. Voice of All is unofficial fan content permitted under the Wizards of the Coast fan content policy. Magic the Gathering is copyright Wizards of the Coast. Thanks so much for listening. Y'all have a great day.